The Boeing 787 Dreamliner is currently dominating the medium-sized, wide-body aircraft segment of the aviation industry with its superior features. Can the Airbus A330neo replace or become more popular than the Dreamliner? How will Airbus do this? And what strengths does the A330neo have to become more popular than the 787? That's what we will examine in today's episode. So how can the A330neo become popular in the future? The following strengths are the outstanding features compared with the 787 and the reasons why many believe this aircraft will have a brighter future. Firstly, it's the fleet compatibility within the Airbus family. For airlines that prefer Airbus aircraft in their fleet and have a majority of Airbus planes, integrating this aircraft is easier, ensuring fleet homogeneity without significant downtime. However, it can be challenging for airlines with mixed fleets, as they might still favor the 787 for several reasons. Additionally, its flexibility in replacing narrow-body aircraft and operating both short- and long-haul routes is noteworthy. Secondly, the aircraft's seating layout of 242 is considered quite beautiful and regarded more highly than the 333 layout of the Dreamliner in economy class. This is one of the factors that generates significant preference for the A330neo. Thirdly, this aircraft is more fuel efficient and quieter compared to previous variants. It achieves a 45% reduction in noise footprint and has demonstrated its capability to fly with up to a 50% blend of sustainable aviation fuel. Airbus aims for 100% compatibility by the end of the decade. The aircraft, with its larger wings, aerodynamic improvements, and more efficient engines, offers a 25% reduction in fuel consumption per seat compared to the A330 CEO. It boasts the best wing aspect ratio in its class, with an aspect ratio of 11, surpassing other wide-body aircraft like the 787, 777X, and A350, which typically have an aspect ratio of around 9.5. Furthermore, the enhancements in passenger experience within Airbus's airspace cabin are substantial. It provides over 66% more overhead bin space, accommodates 10 additional seats compared to its predecessor, features new ceiling panels, customizable mood lighting, and much more. One of the major advantages of the A330neo compared to the 787 Dreamliner, or the bigger A350-800 even, is availability and price. If you already operate Airbus jets in your fleet, you'll benefit from the common type rating and or shorter transition training. And if you want your new aircraft delivered sooner than later, it's an attractive option. While flag carriers will likely opt for the more modern and efficient designs with composite materials, this aircraft, which doesn't quite match those aircraft, is still fairly efficient, cheaper, and with less of a backlog of orders. The other idea is that while the 7-8 the 7th of may be the best in class overall, and for some operations by a considerable margin, and a Dreamliner may well be selling in 2050. The A330neo may be the great in the recent, and an Airbus still unstop upgrading this one so no one knows how it is strong in the future. Unless composite construction becomes far cheaper or alloys become far more expensive, a possibility, the 7-8 the 7th of May continue to struggle so far as respectable profits are concerned. Except for range, it is almost certain that the next generation of engines, which will be smaller, lighter, and more efficient than the current ones, if fitted to the A330, would allow it to outperform the current Dreamliner. The next reason is the political, and trade tensions between China and the United States could lead Chinese airlines to choose the European option instead of the American manufacturer Boeing. With Chinese airlines already having 787 for their fleets, they are expected to consider Airbus's NEO aircraft for their next orders. Indeed, according to Bloomberg, Airbus is in advanced negotiations with Chinese airlines for a substantial sale of A330 aircraft, potentially involving more than 100 units. Besides the functional advantages, let's talk about Boeing's current situation, which is a significant advantage for Airbus aircraft. Boeing is currently facing several issues with a low production rate in producing Dreamliner of five aircraft per month. This comes as Boeing works to improve its quality control processes amidst increased oversight from the FAA. The manufacturer still has a substantial backlog of orders, far surpassing Airbus's backlog of NEO version orders. Furthermore, ongoing issues such as the recent door latch problem have heightened customer concerns about Boeing and the 787. Perhaps these factors will lead potential customers to shift towards Airbus with their aircraft. From the above strengths, let's take a look at the order status of this aircraft. Since its launch in 2014, the order situation for the A330neo has not been as promising compared to the Dreamliner. As of the end of May 20th, 24, the aircraft has attracted orders for only 319 airframes, while Boeing's 787-300 
787 series has received around 2,000 orders. However, the Dreamliner program was launched in 2004, 10 years before this Airbus aircraft. So, to be fair, the Airbus aircraft has another 10 years to prove its true potential. Surprisingly, airlines have not chosen this aircraft despite having operated, or currently operating, A330-200 or 300 aircraft in their fleets. Examples of this include Air Canada, Air France, KLM, Lufthansa, Qantas, Qatar Airways, Saudia, and Thai Airways. It seems they prefer the Dreamliner much more over the A330neo. We have a detailed analysis of this topic in a previous video. You can click the link below to learn more. The situation looks more promising when considering how many airlines are currently operating it. Some major airlines include Delta Airlines with 21, TAP Air Portugal with 19, and Condor with 18. Additionally, in the long run, Malaysia Airlines will soon join this list, having ordered 20 aircraft A330-900. Perhaps with progress moving in such a promising direction, in the future, this Airbus aircraft will increasingly attract more orders. So, are the strengths mentioned enough for the A330neo to over the Dreamliner and become the most popular aircraft in the future? It seems quite challenging because the Dreamliner is an outstanding aircraft, and this Airbus aircraft also faces significant obstacles compared to Boeing's flagship. These obstacles can be listed as follows. Before we move on to the next part, please help us improve our channel further by checking if you have subscribed to receive our updates. Thank you. To begin, despite winning in cabin layout, the humidity in the 787's cabin is 10 to 15% compared to 4 to 7% in other aircraft, which is a significant difference. This becomes one of the major factors affecting passenger comfort due to the dry air causing discomfort in passengers' nasal and throat. Therefore, Boeing's aircraft provides better air quality, offering a comfortable experience at 43,000 feet altitude, which presents a significant challenge for the A330neo. Next, the cabin width on this Airbus aircraft is smaller compared to the Dreamliner 5.26M versus 5.49M of the Dreamliner, although it can accommodate up to 406 passengers, more than Boeing's 381 passengers, but requires larger members of the crew. Although the 787-9 can accommodate slightly fewer passengers, it also appears to have the capability to fly farther while consuming less fuel. This is largely attributed to the structural materials of the Boeing aircraft frame, which contains a high proportion of carbon fiber reinforced plastic, CFRP. Indeed, the Boeing 787 is 80% composite materials, while the Airbus aircraft Neo only has 14% composite materials. Additionally, regarding cabin amenities, the windows of the Airbus aircraft are made of conventional plastic, unlike its competitor whose windows are adjustable in brightness, making them more prominent. Furthermore, the windows of the A330neo are also significantly smaller. Another one, despite all the upgrades compared to its predecessor, the operational performance of the Airbus 900 version still appears lower than the figures reported for the similarly sized Boeing Dash 9. Additionally, the Airbus aircraft Neo weighs a hefty 251 tons, significantly more than the 787 at 227.9 tons. This could be a major reason why it consumes more fuel and has higher operating costs compared to its competitors. Lastly, the Dreamliner is a new design, whereas the A330neo is merely an upgrade from the CEO version. Despite similar range and capacity, comparing it directly to the Boeing aircraft isn't entirely fair. Airlines typically prefer the latest technology rather than an upgraded version of an older model. This is evident as airlines with CEO version in their fleet have already been reluctant not to consider replacing them with the Aneo version we discussed earlier. Despite these challenges, Airbus continues to upgrade this variant even though it has been on the market for a full decade. This demonstrates their commitment to not neglecting their products and always striving for improvement. Airbus is also renowned for actively listening to customer feedback for product enhancements. The Airbus 900 version offers airlines the lowest operating cost to enter the wide-body aircraft market compared to its counterparts. Additionally, in terms of cabin amenities, Airbus has upgraded the A330neo's windows to be significantly larger than before. In February this year, Airbus announced that starting from around the fourth quarter of 2025, customers will be able to receive aircraft equipped with the Step 4 package. Airbus stated that this package allows operators of the A330-900 to benefit from the capability to increase takeoff weight by approximately 2.6 tons at certain airports, while at more constrained airports, the net benefit could reach up to 4 tons. All of this is achieved without increasing engine thrust. Two main factors work together to make this feasible. One is providing a set of intermediate wing flaps called the enhanced takeoff configuration, and the other is implementing faster landing gear and door procedures. The number of aircraft sold does not necessarily equate to how successful it has been. Profit does. 
Thanks to its relatively ridiculously small budget, the A330neo can cover its development costs in the low hundreds of units sold, whereas the Dreamliner will need to be well into four figures to achieve the same. The 7.8 the 7th of May be a far better long-range aircraft, whereas the Airbus aircraft can be a better prospect for shorter journeys and has even been beefed up to cope with the increased flight cycles that type of operation incurs. With many factors above, the A330neo still has the potential to become a popular wide-body aircraft. The only thing it needs to prove that is time. Let's wait and see what unfolds in the coming years, and feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you, and see you again soon.